Well, we're just rejigging the program around because we warmly welcome back Sir Steve Hansen, who is in Japan at the moment. Welcome back, sir. Thanks, Marty. Nice to be back. Has this made big news in Japan? Has it? Razor being named as the coach next year? Uh, no. Okay. No mention of it in Japan. All right. Big talking point in rugby circles all over the world and especially here then. Did it come as a surprise to you or is what is more of a surprise is the timing of the announcement? Uh, well, it doesn't come as a surprise. Like he's been off the job and, uh, you know, then Fozzie fought back and got maintained it. So he was obviously the prime candidate. I don't know who else replied and they're not telling us, so... I think they're leaving us in the dark whether there was more than one candidate or not, but it um, doesn't matter. They've, they've, they've selected Razor, and now it's it's about getting on and supporting uh, him when his time comes. And in the meantime, we've got to make sure we get him behind the team and, and Fozzie and his crew at the World Cup. That's what concerns me, and I wonder if whether it concerns a lot of other All Black fans, is what kind of a distraction... Is this going to be? Is it going to be a distraction? And just for the headspace of Ian Foster as the coach, I mean, how well supported does he feel? Oh, he won't feel any more or any less than he has been for the last probably 12 months. But I, I think fozzie has got himself into a headspace where he's accepted that it's happening. So he's tried to tell them that it's not going to be conducive to... Um, the World Cup campaign because there will be distractions and mainly for a lot of the staff. Um, however, you know, that, they've got their head around that and they'll be working away. And um, so, what matters now is, uh, you know, Razor keeps it. He talked about it yesterday, you know, that he respects the the current crew and lets them get on with their job and, and he stays out of it. And um, you know, if he does that, then they'll be fine. Is, should there be any kind of crossover though? Was there any kind of? I mean, what kind of handover happened when you left and Ian Foster took the job? Oh, there was conversations, but you know, it was um, after the after the appointment, so uh, which was after the World Cup, and um, you know, Fozzie had already been there. It was the same with Graham. Like Graham and I didn't have any big conversations uh, as such, but um, you know, he'd he'd been my tutor for. The eight years before it, so uh, un- understood the environment and and um, you know as Foz did. So there'll need to be a conversation between Fozzie and and Razor, so Razor gets an understanding of what he's walking into um, before he walks into it. There's no doubt about that, but that can happen after the World Cup. Steve, who owns all the intellectual property of it? Like everything that you've got on your laptops and your management team has just in terms of tactics, in terms of all kinds of training secrets, all kinds of moves and that. Who owns all of that stuff and do you have to hand all of that over? Uh, (laughs) It's a moot point who owns it because uh, Rugby Union would say they do and the people that have it on their laptops uh, would say they do. So, um, you know... You can't take an idea out of a person's head. You can take it off their computer, but uh, so you know. I, don't, I think it's if you want to pass stuff on, you'll pass it on. If you don't want it, you know, like Razor wants to do things his way, so he won't want too much information anyway. Okay, okay. So all right, okay, okay. I just, I mean, I'm just trying to figure it out because I mean, one all black coach to the next. I mean, it's a kind of it's a hat changing of the guard. I was just wondering whether or not all of that takes place at the same time. It's, well, uh, as sorry, I said, there'll be. There should be some conversation because Ray's has not been in the environment since he played. So, um, you know, he needs to to hear and see um, up close what what has been happening and then make some decisions about what he wants to do. Um, You know, he'll already have formed some of his own opinions about where he wants to take the team, you know, just naturally being different than Ian and... And, and, you know, wouldn't matter who the current coach was, the next coach is always going to be do things differently and um, because they're different people. Is it essential at all? Well, obviously it's not now because Ray's hasn't coached internationally, but is, this, is, is it essential for somebody to have been in that environment? We've had a succession plan ever since Ted's been involved with yourself and Ian Foster, so we're breaking away completely from that. Yeah, well, that's OK. They've done that before too, so... Like, I, I don't think we can get all twisted and turned up about, you know, Rugby Union's made a decision, they've made Razor the 
coach. Um, and, you know, let's not do what happened last time when Fozzie got made coach and and get uh, not get behind him. Let's get behind him and make it, you know, it's a hard enough job when you don't have the support of the of the half the people and half the media and and your own organisation. <clears throat> and, um, you know, Razor's got the luxury of everyone being in behind him at the moment. And, yep. Yeah, you know, he's just now yep. going to sit back, let the World Cup happen, and then, you know, do a good job with the Crusaders. That's that's where he's got to put his energy, and and um, I'm sure he will. And, and uh, you know, then when they push the go button after the World Cup, then he then he's away flying. So Steve Jans, Hanson is with us from Japan. I mean, you know, I suppose what most of us are trying to get our heads around is how easy is it for Ian Foster to just gung-ho go ahead, maintain his focus and everything else, knowing that he doesn't have the support of the people that have employed him. I mean, just as a human, I mean, that's a bloody tough position to be in. It is tough, but um, they're saying they do have, they, they are supporting him. So, um, look, I, I think... Ian's a strong enough man, strong enough coach. Uh, the the whole environment and that All Black team have shown us. You know, they were they were back to the wall stuff uh, over in South Africa last year when they had to win the test just to keep going forward, and and they managed to do that. So I think that's a mark of um, how strong that this group can cope with the pressure. So. Um, we've just got to let them get on with it. They'll get, want to just be left alone now to get on with it. And if we do that and we support them from afar, and uh, you know, they're, they're more than capable of winning this World Cup. That's the problem, though, because we, we both know that and we've both been around this game long enough to know that these questions are going to continue right through till France, that they aren't going to go away, that the players are going to be asked about it and the coach is going to be asked about it. Even if they don't want to ask or answer these questions, it's, it's, it, is, it is coming. Uh, yeah, but they knew that. And they told the New Zealand Rugby Union that. So now what? Right. You know, you just got to deal with it. What does the process have to be done now? This is the final question I'll ask you before I ask you a couple of other things. But what does the process have to be done now? It happened after the last World Cup. And I know that a lot of the coaches that were potentials were tied up or they'd already signed contracts with other jobs. But would it have been better to leave it after the World Cup in your mind? Um. Well, I think they got burnt last time, so they were worried about that. But what they didn't take into account was everybody had their coaches sorted. So, in my opinion, they'd have been better to wait. But in their opinion, they wanted to push the button, and they've done that. And yeah, they're in charge of New Zealand rugby, so they, it's them that die and fall on these decisions. And just like coaches, you know, there's got to be re- repercussions if it doesn't work. If it does work, well, you know, they've been super. Yeah. But, um, and it doesn't matter what my opinion is. The, the, what we need to understand is they've made a decision, so give them some credit for that. And uh, whether you agree with it or don't agree with it, it's irrelevant. It's it's the fact they've made the decision, they've done it, they've appointed a guy, and now let's get on with it. Let's get on with supporting the team at the World Cup, and, and then once that's over, let's get on with supporting the team, uh, you know, from then on as well. <laughs> I, I did. Uh, I did. I did smirk at some of the comments that you made about Ireland being favourites for the World Cup. How how important or not is it to wear that tag? Because it's something that you wore that we always wear. But maybe this is the first time in a who knows how long that we go to a World Cup where we don't have that tag. Yeah. Well, look, I I, I just made a comment that if it was your blacks that were had the same record. And I'm not calling them chokers by any stretch of the imagination, but because I think they're a very, very good team. But if in the same situation, that's what would have happened to us. You know, we know that because that's what, what what did happen to us. Here's a team that were world number one going into the last World Cup, Ireland, and then they're going to go into this one as number one. And, you know, they've, they've made more progress. They've got more depth than they did, I think, going into the last one. But they've got more depth this time, so... Um, they're a very good rugby side. And the last team to beat them, I think, was the All Blacks, wasn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and then from that so, point on, they've won 10 in a row and they've won that Six Nations, which is an extremely difficult thing to do to win a Grand Slam like that. What were your overall thoughts watching mm-hmm. that tournament? How good do you think those teams are? And, and is, for example, is Ireland a better side in your mind watching them than they were when they played us last year? Um, I don't think they're a better side. I, th- I just think they're a good side. You know, they do the... They do things really, really well. They do the simple things well. Um, their skill sets are, they've, you know, got every player who needs to be able to catch and pass, catch and passing well under pressure. 
Their running lines are great. Um, they understand how they want to play. And, you know, Sexton drives them around the park really, really well. Like, he's a big he's a big part of what they do and, um, and really important to them. So they're just a good side. But the Six Nations has been outstanding, I think, this year. You know, there's been some great rugby. Scotland played tremendous. I don't know if you saw the last game against yep, Italy. Yep. Italy could have easily won that game. They knocked the ball on inches from the goal line and the last minute of the game and Scotland's attitude was well we want to score a try and, and they did they went the length of the field so yeah, the mindset I think of those home nation teams has changed from playing that Dow rugby to to actually using everybody on the park and it makes you more dangerous when you do that because it's a lot harder to defend and um, you know, France have been good for a while their, their development program has been strong as Ireland's has been and uh, you look at the Six Nations under 20 tournament, it's great for developing players and the stuff like that we have to look at down here and get our development program going stronger and give our guys more experience other than just uh, super competition. Playing at home, I mean, you know, so many people say, oh, the French are under pressure playing at home. We played at home in 2011, you know exactly what that pressure feels like, but that you can embrace that pressure, it can work in your favour. It can. Um, <laughs> you know, you've got to understand that you have to embrace it. You don't have a choice. If you don't, then it's going to kill you. So, But, you know, again, France are in the same boat, aren't they? They haven't won a World Cup before. And they're now, you know, number two team in the world. They're playing very exciting rugby. They've got a great team. They know that they, that they're a possibility of winning out. Excuse me. So all of that then becomes pressure. And, and when they're playing at home, they'll have all the supporters which will become bigger and bigger as they go further into the tournament so it's all stuff they'll have to deal with but you know I'm not saying they can't I'm just saying that, that it'll be there you have been watching any Super Rugby? Watched a little bit yeah you watch the Blues Crusaders? Uh, no I didn't watch that game okay. no, oh. we were playing at the same time you missed the best match then and the best match of the tournament is absolutely terrific We've got replay, Marty. I'll have a bit of And also, finally, just coaching this World 15 versus the Barbars end of May. You looking forward to that? Yeah. Yeah, I am, actually. I'm in, look, I'm really enjoying what I'm doing up here in Toyota at the moment, and I'm actually doing a bit more coaching than uh, we first and Vivas would happen, but um, really working with some outstanding um, management people and coaches and and the players are just hungry to learn, and um, we're starting to build something that I think, you know, in 12 to 18 months' time, we'll see some real good results. But, you know, we we'll just take it one day at a time. And and that's made me sort of even more excited about going to, you know, up north to, to coach this team. And it's not a test match. It's a, it's a, what, it, what it is, though, is an important game for the game itself and that we play it in the right spirit and we try and play it uh, using everybody on the park and and entertain the people that pay the money to come and watch it. Yeah, I'll just end with the Freddie Stewart red card. Did you see that? Um, and, you know, I mean, this is the worry. We've had red cards in World Cup and a crucial matches. Warburton, of course, in the semi in 2011 and that. it's, it's It still seems such a grey area. Is there anywhere that, you know, anything that you can think about where they go, they could tidy it up or make it a just, I don't know, a lot, a lot easier on everyone who's watching the games because the groans you could hear around the world as soon as that red card was brandished? Yeah, look, I, I've got my own personal opinions. I think if, if, if it's a punch, a kick, or, you know, a, a swinging arm that's really deliberate foul play, then you should be off. But you don't see too many of those these days. And what we're seeing now is a lot of collision red cards, and they're not intentional. Um, so I like the idea of saying, right, oh, well, you, 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 you're off if it's if it was your fault um, for 20 minutes. Um However, you know, there's sometimes I, I think uh, the guy that gets sent off is, is actually the guy that um, is the guy that got injured. So I, I, I just don't see how you'd want to commit foul play against yourself. So there's still room for a lot of improvement on it. I know uh, we've got to be concerned about the head injuries, and but I, I'm just not convinced that giving red cards out willy-nilly for what are clearly accidents with no intent 
um, we're just putting the onus on the on the referee or now the TMO gets to make that decision and is he qualified to make that decision? Uh, who knows? Um, but are we doing it because we want to be able to say later on in court cases, well, at least we gave them red cards? You know, I, I'm just not sure why the big the big onus is on red cards. I'd like to see us spend more money educating people to tackle better, more money spent on people being educated to to anticipate what's going to happen in front of them a lot quicker. Um, and I think we'd solve some of the problems, you know. I think we could change a couple of rules, like the, the height of the ruck is, you know, how do you remove a guy that's over the ball if he's got his head tucked it down? It's just like, well, either you can't or you can. Um, so let's bring the height of the ruck up again and uh, see what we can do there. But uh, look, I know World Rugby are uh, trying their hardest at getting it right and... And I still think we can do more. I appreciate all the time you always give us, mate. Thank you so much for that. Go well up there. We'll catch up. Well, will do. Thank you, mate. Okay, mate. Cheers. Two twenty. It is on the platform. You've been listening to Sir Steve Hansen covering a gamut range of topics there, including Razor Robertson, All Black coach, uh, Ireland favourites for the World Cup, and yeah, that red card to Freddie Stewart.